Alrighty, what's up guys? We're back again with another video. This time we're going to be talking about uh, the newest affix, the new seasonal affix, the Awakened affix. It is currently active on the PTR and I've actually done pretty extensive testing with this affix. Um, I've done a fair amount of keys with it just as a whole and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of how to play this affix and what you're going to be looking forward come patch uh, during patch 8.3. So this will be a guide for, it's like a general guide for the Awakened affix. I'm also going to throw in some advanced tips towards the end and then also give my own opinions on what it is. But the first little bit of half is like the first little bit is just going to be talking through the affix itself. All right. So first thing, um, basically what the affix does is there are these pillars that are around the instance that you can see on your mini map and they'll end up looking like this. And you can actually see what the spires are named and you're able to determine which lieutenant mob will be encased inside of that spire. Um, whenever you actually click on the pillars, then you go down into like a different realm and you're fighting a lieutenant mob. And whenever that lieutenant mob is killed, it does like an out portal. So it, say you fought the blob here and then you ended up like pulling and you ended up going like across and pulling the blob somewhere else, like into Priestess Saloons' room, you would be able to like drop the out portal near here. So you could actually skip all the mobs that are in the way. That is the intent of how this is supposed to be functioning. Um, there's something, it, basically the intent of this is to replace using shrouds to navigate through instances. Kind of successful in that regard because they place these spires in okay locations. Sometimes not exactly the most practical thing though, but it, that's whatever. Something that's important to note is that you can't interact with anything while inside the rift, such as levers, gates, robots, doors, whatever. Um, and then you also cannot interact with the pylons while you're in combat from either side. If you're in combat with some with some mobs in the downstairs realm, you can't click the out portal. If you're in combat with like a trash pack, you can't click the up portal. So that is also a very important element. And that will come back to be talked about in the advanced tip section in just a little bit. Uh, the mobs will spawn in the end boss room if you do not kill them. And like the, the end boss room is static. For example, Harlan Sweet is always like the end boss of Freehold. That's what that means. And then the last thing that's probably important to note is that the pylons themselves don't move, but the lieutenant mobs that are inside the pylons move on a two-week cycle. Um, and there's only two cycles, period. So that, that creates less variability and should reduce the amount of Tuesday depletes that you incur, but it will still incur some Tuesday depletes. All right, so let's talk about the first lieutenant mob. Um, you have Samrek, Beckerer of Chaos. Basically, this is the guy who will end up casting the fear on you. Whenever you're looking at these mobs, you can actually see them in the downstairs realm uh, a little bit beforehand, just by, like, you'll see their reflection down there. So it can give you a little bit of an idea of what mob you're going to be fighting if you don't actually just, like, open up your mini-map and look at it there. Uh, Samrek, he does, obviously, I call him the fear guy, but... He is part of the Entropic Spire. He puts three random fears on people, and they can be dispelled or trimmered. And, okay, so let me let me pause this real quick and back up for a second. So whenever the fears actually go out, you can dispel two of them. So if you instantly dispel the low duration one, you can actually get a double dispel on, on two of them if you're really, really quick with your dispels. So that's super nice. And then he had little ads that spawned with him. Um, we can back up so I can you can show the see these he has these ravenous flesh rend mobs and they put a debuff on the tank and it's just like a basically a bleed it's similar to the ticks and under rot as would be a good uh a good example of something similar all right so that is samrek he is obviously the fear guy though let me actually do something bang all right cool all right so next one we have uh urgroth breaker of heroes um, this one is the tank buster guy, and he is, I would go ahead and say, fairly overtuned. And and it's fairly overtuned just because the Spirit Breaker ability that he casts on your tank uh, is not blockable in a current stance, and it, but it is physical damage. Um, I generally would recommend eating the first cast of the Spirit Breaker ability, trying to build threat. He also does like an AoE damaging thing. You just move out of it. But that one's not that bad. It's not hard to move out. But the Spirit Breaker is by far the most dangerous part. So eating the first cast of the Spirit Breaker and then just running away. Because he won't cast it on your tank if your tank has threat. 
and you were moving away from him. Uh, I think it's like 21 yards or something like that. So just continuously moving away is how you definitely deal with that. Or like you, you want to use a wall charge probably for the first spirit breaker cast while you're building threat though. Um, he also has malignant growth ads. You could see those on the screen and they slow you. Uh, let me back up just a little bit. And they actually slow you and they do a pretty sizable amount of damage if you stand in them, but they fortunately don't have too much health. And if you just like pop movement speed and run through them like while if you all hit the pylon at the exact same time, you can run away from the malignant growths before they actually get spawned. And you can kill them if, the, if you'd like, but they're not mandatory for you to leave the realm. So not exactly mandatory, so it is okay. All right, so next one, we have uh, Void, Re Void Weaver Malthier, which is this spider woman. And she basically does two alternating casts. One is a, one is a curse and the other one is a disease. And she also has these explosive scarabs that are associated with her. Um, the curse and the disease are on alternating casts and do not share a lockout. So you would you actually need a three melee kick rotation to be able to get all of her casts. She also spawns with these explosive scarabs. And whenever uh, if, these, if these guys last too long, then they will get pretty big and then explode on death doing a sizable amount of damage however if you kill them quick enough they will stay they will remain small and not explode doing any damage this is probably the easiest one uh the disease is also tied to a slow so it is like druid shapeshiftable vengeful retreatable tiger's lustable that kind of thing the curse is not a slow but it is a curse so off spec stuff like shaman mage druid can all dispel it all right, so that would be this one. This would be the one if you're going to pull any with the boss. This one's probably the most likely just because of uh, kicking the casts is fairly easy to deal with. All righty. And then we got the last one. We got the blob, Blood of the Corruption. Um, he also spawns with these Mind Flay tentacles, which is by far the hardest part of him. And we're going to talk about uh, some cheesy way of dealing with these Mind Flay tentacles. But as it currently stands, if you deal with them face on, you're probably going to have a bad time. Just because their their cast is fucking wild. Look at that, dude. Our Resto Druid actually just died instantly there. You, you can see that. Uh, they get targeted by two Mind Flays and just are getting chunked, and they just instantly die. So that's not great. You can stun them. You can kick them. Um, you can do all normal CC to the to the eyeballs. But And in addition to that, the Blob also has... A ground effect that you need to very quickly move out of, otherwise you'll probably die. So that are the those are the four types of lieutenant mini boss mob that you will be spawning and fighting inside of inside of the instance. Um, those are just like how they work at face value, no cheesy mechanics or anything else like that. So let's talk about uh, a couple of advanced strategies in regards to this. First off, Budget Shadow Meld is what this clip is titled. It's by Shift Mage. Um, I'm also going to put my, sh my notes for this video in the description. If you guys would like, I link timestamps of videos and stuff like that so you can actually look at them. It also has pretty detailed info, so it would be nice to see. Okay, so basically what we're trying to do, I guess let me try to explain the purposes first. So we're going to get the mobs grouped up, and then I'm going to use Mass Root on them. Uh, uh, because basically you can mass root whenever you're out of combat and you can stay out of combat by casting mass root and then once that mass root on the mobs actually goes through then you're actually able like the mage will sit in ice block for a couple seconds and then he'll come out of the ice block he'll invis off all the trash and then he'll be able to hit the pylon what we're trying to do here is trying to get all the mobs away from the pylon itself to where all of us can go down and not have to deal with it uh, not have to deal with the trash pack that's associated with this and this will be super useful during the season. I expect this to be used extensively. Okay, so here, he, he goes into Ice Block. I mastered everything. We're all off to the side already hitting the Spire. You can like see it on the minimap that we're already far away. He's waiting for this Charge Coil to finish casting. He's going to come out of his Ice Block. He blinks away. He instantly pops his Invis. And then once he drops combat, then he hits the Spire. He goes down into the, uh, into the realm with us. This is doable with um, Rogue vanish this is doable with mage and viz is doable with shadow meld all that other stuff so this allows you to be able to skip trash packs fairly easy all right let's talk about one of the most important things skipping all the tentacles from the blob 
And this was found by Squishy. Uh, and basically, okay, so so he hits the he hits the pylon. He's going down. The blood of the corruptor is uh, casting the armies of Nazoth to be able to spawn the 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 eyeball men. And he is instantly running away. He's going to grapple as far away as possible. And the reason that this works, hold on, is because um, the the eyeball men will teleport if there are no targets near it. If you are very far away. So he takes them as far away as possible. So you see they're not casting. Now they start teleporting to him. Now they start teleporting to him. He vanishes. You instantly see him cast Vanish. They stop casting. And then they just sit there. Blood of the Corruptor. He does have True Sight. So if you're playing a ro if you're playing the Rogue part of this, you actually need to walk far away to not proc combat with the, the Blood itself. But combat drops. We all enter the instance. Um, the... The tentacles do not refixate or re-aggro. We do not have to kill them to be able to get out of the instance at all. And that is how you deal with Blood of the Corruptor if you're using a rogue. This is so fucking important. And rogue is so incredibly stupid. But this is this is one of the most important things that you could actually do. Um, knowing, knowing how to do this if you're playing in a coordinated group will make your run significantly quicker. Because these Mind Flight tentacles are bad. Alright. So with that said, let me give my thoughts on the effects. In general, I think the effix is good by design. The lieutenant mobs are slightly overtuned. Like those mind flight tentacles are like super stupid. Uh, Samrek, breaker of heroes. Also, his tank buster could get could deserve a little bit of a nerf. Uh, we'll say um, the effix feels like it's lacking something. It is really interesting though, but for me, it does feel like it's lacking something. It's kind of hard to describe why, but. I feel like maybe if the lieutenant mobs got like a 50% health reduction and you were able to like kill them pretty quickly and utilize because utilization of the portals is what should be the most important element, not killing the lieutenant mob, but it feels like they have um, made it, made it in a way that the lieutenant mob is the most important element and not the end portal. So I, I think that there should be maybe just a little bit of a switch there. I do like how the the mobs. If you if you do choose to kill the or try to kill the last boss of the instance, I do enjoy how the mobs will spawn with the last boss of the instance. Not so hot on like the the cheesy shit that can and probably will be coming soon. I don't know all the strategies for how the Awakened to Fix works yet. Uh, definitely just know what I have been playing and what I've been seeing. So it, it can get worse if it is thoroughly cheesed. Then this. Not super hot on the Awakened Effects if it's thoroughly cheesed, but we'll we'll see how it ends up working out. Um, I'm going to have a pretty extensive Mechagon video coming out soon. Make sure to check down in the description for like all my notes on the Awakened Effects. It it is pretty extensive and will help people out be able to learn it. I hope it helps you guys out get ready for patch 8.3. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later. Peace.